this is where he just should have stopped trading, right? This is where you, you need to, and this, this, to be honest, is what will separate you from making a lot of money in the long run to making a little, I think, is when you go back and fight here, th these are just the bad habits, right? These are the situations where you're already emotional from what happened down here. So you got to walk away. You got to leave the casino. You, you got to stop uh, fighting this thing, right? Or else you are going to blow the fuck up. You know, right when this happens, I and I think all these short ideas are, are completely fine, right? I mean, maybe uh, he could have done a bit more uh, planning his trade out. Like maybe it's a bit too many bullets on the front side. But I think the problem is, is that, uh, you know, when you come back and fight, that is what, that's how you actually blow up. Like th that's a habit to actually blow up. Like because you're, you're going back and you're not really thinking of, on logic. You're too emotional. Uh, you've burned out your capital from 9.30 to, 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 to 10 o'clock. And it's not, you didn't waste your capital on a bad idea, right? You didn't, it's not necessarily a terrible idea, but now you're, after zombie time, you're making kind of irrational decisions, right? And even though he didn't lose his ass on these, if this had have just teleported to like four or five and just halted up, you would have been done right? This is a, a, a tiny stock, right? These things can go from three to six to seven. And before you know it, you're walking away from the computer with a massive fucking loss. So you really, really, really need to recognize these fighting habits, right? And in this case, this, this, this guy decided to fight and he got lucky, but you should be kind of flighting. You should be running away from your screen after you've kind of burnt this mental capital like that. Maybe come back in the afternoon for reversal, but for this time being, you should really, really just leave it alone. And also, I think this is like a really big thing, is that, um, uh, here, just let me, uh, I think also like you need to remember who's trapped in this situation, right? We have a ton of shorts who shorted down here on some pretty good volume who are now trapped, right? Your whole, thesis should be based on the other side being trapped. So in a situation like this, right, it's very, very, very easy to lose. And he kind of got caught up here and he got lucky. But man, if you, this thing could easily, if we were in a different market right now and you came back to fight and you didn't get so lucky, you'd have blown up. Like straight up, you would have blown up. So you got to say, what's my, what's, what's the area on a ticker where I'm going to stop trading this completely if it gets to this level, because, you know, they, these habits are how you blow up coming back like this. It's like that always says, you know, like you dip your leg in the water and then you end up getting like fucking it, the whole thing bit off by an alligator, you know? So I would just, after this stop, you know, you're wrong. Just admit that you're wrong and just leave it at that. Tommy? Yeah, just a few things to add here. I mean, he says uh, stock is like broken daily chart uh, or like first resistance. I mean, guys, you can see, let me take here. You can see the move here all the way and then dips back, grind, grind. I mean, just be careful with that. When you see something like this, this is really dangerous on like on the short side. I would rather see something parabolic down like that, and I short back the bounce, right? And then for continuity yeah. to low, go lower. I mean, this is like really clear setup when you can, I don't know, like you can sense it. Like, you know, there's some big resistance every time trying to kind of, you know, uh, get there, right? But instead like building a support here and then just like grinding and then boom, right? I mean, you can short some here and stop above this, but you know, realistically, there's not really enough meat down the, down here. Yeah. Right. So if you short like I don't know, two point two, two point three, yes, you can get twenty cents here. But you know, when you see stock couldn't wash right away, and especially at open, you know, at open, I would like to see something like pop here and then drop right away, like that. Right. Yeah. And then you'd be done with it. You don't want to see the grind. You know, I believe yeah, the yellow line is the view app. And it's holding view app above that. So this is like really like the stock is telling you, hey, I'm not going down. Okay. You need to stop out. Right. 
like how many times you could see the stock when when you when it pop like this had open and then keeps grinding like that usually it's going to go you know high and also break this high as well so there's a lot of things that the stock is giving you or like telling you the signal for you to get out and instead you know you try to uh, get back here i mean this is really dangerous i mean you know clear uh front side pretty much this is this is like the new support right and stocks dips right back into it and so that's that's really dangerous i i, I would rather see something like gets here and then wash down big here and maybe i short back the balance to this point for continue to go lower yeah. that's pretty much it and uh, after that, you know, 1030, of course, right? You see the here, base of the view app. Just use view app as a guy, you know, guys. I mean, if you knew, it would make such easier kind of, you know, like you would have much more easier uh, trade if you just wait for the view app crack. But like, you know, it's above view app, let it do it, its thing, right? The moment it cracked like that, can short back the bounds, raise above that for for you know for quick trade, and that's it. Yeah, that's what I think too. Also, as far as the risk reward goes, right on something like this, like I mean, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough, right? There's not much meat left to be because honest. like we really have support here, so we're really yeah. opening up near kind of the bottom of the range, and like we mm -hmm. have some resistance here, so it's really like kind of like one to one. Or, yep. and he shorted 2.2. So you're risking like one to one here. And then, you know, he, he shorts some up here, probably because he, he probably felt too much down here, starts trying to short a little bit up here, and then forced to stop out up here. At this point, like, you're, you, you know, you're done. You should not be, yep. not be trading this anymore. Now we're over VWAP, right? And the safest trade, as Tom said, even though we get this crack here, like, that's not enough. We still have a ton of people short from down below, right? Harry, would you have gone long at 1050? Uh, I think it's a great, I think for me, like if I'm longing this, um, I'm probably taking some in the strength up here. You know, yep. I'm recognizing that the volume down here is obviously increasing. Uh, you know, I'm probably taking some in the strength up here. Uh, I would, to me, as far as this market goes, VWAP isn't safe. Like despite the support in the VWAP, like to me, it's not really, this isn't a really safe trade. Like I'm still okay with the shorts here. I'm okay with that. Like, I don't think that's necessarily a terrible, terrible trade. It's the not stopping out up here and the continuing to trade up here that I think made this trade not the best. 